This is the solution to question 8, paper 2 of the SQA's Curriculum for Excellence Specimen Higher exam. We're given this grain container in the shape of a cylinder with a hemispherical roof on it. There's a flat circular base and various pieces of information. The radius is R, height is H, volume is 100. And we're told the formula of the curved surface area of a hemisphere and we're asked to show that the surface area of metal needed to build this container is given by this formula here. So let's first try to get to grips with the various parts of this. So the hemispherical cap, there's a curved surface area of a cylinder which if we unwrap it would look like a rectangle and then there's the flat base if you look down on it it's a circle so this hemispherical roof we're told curved surface area of that is 2 pi r squared and if we look at the unwrapped cylinder that's the height the length of this rectangle will be the same as the circumference of the cylinder in effect what we're doing is we're you imagine a, a line here and a pair of scissors cutting that up and then we open it out so this length is the circumference of a circle of radius r, which is 2 pi r. And then this area here is pi r squared. It's the area of a circle. So this area is 2 pi r h. Now you'll notice in this when we're working out the final formula for the area, which we now have as 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h plus pi r squared, there's an h appears in here. And there is no h in this formula here. So we must go back to this and look at more information to see what we can do about it. Now it tells us the volume of the cylindrical part. Let's just draw a picture of that. There's the cylindrical part with radius r and height h. And we're told that the volume of that is 100 cubic meters. Now we know the volume of a cylinder is the area of the base times the height. So the volume is equal to pi r squared times h. And that's what's equal to 100. So we can get an expression for h in terms of r by dividing both sides of this by pi r squared. So in this expression here, 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r times h we now know is 100 over pi r squared. And then there's the pi r squared to add at the end. So this is still looking fairly complicated, but that fraction in the middle can be simplified. We can divide top and bottom of this fraction by pi and divide top and bottom of this fraction by r. And one of these uh, will disappear. So we have 2 times 100, that's 200, over and on the, the base of this we have r. And we have another pi r squared. So one, two lots of pi r squared plus another one lot of pi r squared at the end of the expression there will give us three lots of pi r squared. And we have this fraction 200 r, which is in essence what we have in this formula. I suppose we should basically write it the other way around instead of adding them in that order, and we'll add them in this order. So there we have it. 
that we've shown that the, the total surface area of this grain container is given by 200 over r plus uh, 3 pi r squared. I've left out the r. There we go. 3 pi r squared. So let's move on to part B of this question. Now that we know the amount of metal needed to make this container is given by this formula, 200 over r plus 3 pi r squared. So we know that the area of this container changes as the radius changes. So some form of graph will go on and there will presumably be a minimum value where this, the area is least. So that's what we have to find. Um, this would involve differentiating, finding when the gradient is zero and showing that that actually is a minimum value. So our first task is to differentiate. This divided by r is a problem, so let's bring that r to the 1 up to the top of the fraction, write it as r to the minus 1. And we're now in a position to differentiate. So therefore, a dashed of r, these are normal rules of differentiation, multiply by the power, so it's negative 200 r to the minus 2, take away 1 from the power. And 2 times the 3 pi would be 6 pi times r to the 1. That's just r. And we can tidy that up by taking the r to the minus 2 down to the bottom of that fraction. So there's an expression for the gradient. So we'll state that for stationary points on the graph, whether the minimum or maximum, just to find these stationary points, uh, set the gradient a dashed r equal to zero. So we have to have that expression that we got once we differentiated this derived function. We have to set that equal to zero. Now to solve this equation, I would first of all multiply both sides by r squared. That therefore will disappear, be left them with minus 200. When we multiply this by r squared we get 6 pi r cubed. And r squared times 0 is just 0. So we're getting there. We have 6 pi r cubed. Add 200 to both sides being equal to 200. And now let's divide both sides by 6 pi. So 2 can cancel top and bottom, 100 over 3 pi. And that's r cubed. So to find r, we must take the cube root of 100 over 3 pi. It might be worthwhile finding out approximately what that is. So let's take 100 and divide it by the whole of 3 times pi. So that equals 10.61. And let's find the cube root. So that would be raising that answer on this calculator is the way to do it to the power of third. Finding the cube root is raising to the power one third. So I get 2.197 and so on. Now, we've certainly produced a value for a stationary point, but we don't yet know whether it's a minimum or not. So let's find out on the left and to the right, there's roughly it's 2.2, whether the gradient is positive or negative to the left and to the right of that. So that will then give us the shape of the graph. 
So, uh, up here, this is the value of r. This is going to be positive or negative for the sine of the gradient, and from that we can get the shape of the graph. Now, we put in a value smaller than 2.2. Easy one to do is 1. And we go back up to the formula for, there's the formula for the gradient, and stick 1 in there. So we get minus 200 plus 6 pi. Well, 200 is a lot larger than 6 pi, 6 lots of 3.1. So taking away 200 from 6, that's a negative value. And let's go to a, a value of r that's greater than 2.2 and an easy one to calculate, maybe 10. So 200 over 10 squared is 100, that's minus 2. If you take away 2 from 6 pi times 10, that's 60 lots of pi, 60 lots of 3 and a bit. That's certainly going to come out to be a positive number. So the shape of the graph we know now is going down, it's flat at 2.2 and it then goes uphill. So we can say that r equals 2.20 and that's to two decimal places gives a minimum value for a. And let's check the question. Determine the value of R which minimises the amount of metal needed to build the container. So we've, we've got hold of that. The exact value is the cube root of 100 over 3 pi, approximately 2.20 to 2 decimal places.